Okay, so I just said Southern Florida got eight inches of rainfall in three hours. How rare is this? Yeah, it's very impressive rainfall thus far in Florida. So far, we've seen about four to eight inches across southern Florida widespread. Um, Sarasota, Florida, I was looking at some data from this morning. They actually saw about four inches of rain in just about an hour in the early morning hours. So that's very impressive. That's something that would be equivalent to a 500 to 1,000 year flood. So very impressive rainfall totals. Now, that was only in a small area. Um, you know, most of South Florida, four to eight inches is while it can cause flooding, it is something that can mostly be handled, but we are seeing significant flooding, certainly in some small pockets around South Florida throughout the, uh, throughout the day today. It can be handled. Is that just because of the, the ground and it can absorb, the wetlands can absorb that much rainfall? Yeah, the Florida soil can be a little bit sandy, and so it can better absorb some of the water. Of course, Florida is in the tropics, so they're used to seeing downpours from thunderstorms and things like that. So their infrastructure can mostly handle a lot of rain. Um, however, when it all comes in one hour, that's where we start to see the problems. And so that's what we saw this morning. There was a lot of issues uh, you know, with flooded roads and stuff earlier today. And, and we are continuing to see that throughout the afternoon during the day today. Still raining hard in a lot of these areas. Multiple flash flood warnings out. There have even been a few tornado warnings across South Florida as well. So that's something else that we're going to have to watch throughout the rest of the day today. So continued rain, flash flood warnings, tornado warnings. That's for today, Wednesday, June 12th. What's the forecast for tomorrow and Friday? Unfortunately, it's going to be much of the same for tomorrow and into Friday, although I think today is probably the wetter of the three days, and then it tends to slow down a little bit over the next two days. Tomorrow, much of the same area can see showers and thunderstorms, maybe even an isolated tornado as well. Um, you know, it, so we can see some of that renewed flooding. You know, we've already seen four to eight inches uh, fall in a widespread area across South Florida, so the ground is very, very saturated. Tomorrow, we could see, you know, several more inches of rain on top of what we're already seeing. And so it won't take much to see the flooding be renewed. And then I think by Friday, we're starting to see things wind down. There can still be some heavy downpours, but I think we're starting to see stuff wind down as kind of the parent low pressure area essentially is, is kind of moving well off the East Coast. Could develop off the East Coast, uh, the Southeast Coast of the United States here over the next couple of days, but either way, it's moving away from the United States. So whether it gets a name or not, um, the main impacts from it will be what is currently going on right now. Now, you mentioned a low pressure system. Is this a brewing hurricane or how would you classify exactly what this weather system is that is causing all of this rain? So us here at AccuWeather, we like to call it a tropical rainstorm. So it's not officially designated by the National Hurricane Center. It doesn't have a name. It's not a for us here at AccuWeather, we like to designate it as a tropical rainstorm because it can still have a lot of impacts um, as we're seeing across South Florida with flooding, tornadoes, things like that. So us here at AccuWeather, we've given it a designation as a tropical rainstorm. However, the National Hurricane Center is outlooking this system for possible tropical development over the next couple of days as it shifts off the coast, um, in which case, if it does become a tropical storm, it would get a name um, attached to it. I don't think this would become a hurricane, just maybe a low end tropical storm, if anything. But like I said, regardless, um, the main impact on the U.S. is the ongoing flooding. And if it develops, it won't really have an impact as it will already be pushing off the East Coast and out into the Atlantic. So it could become a tropical storm. When does tropical storm season start and when does hurricane season start? Does it start simultaneously? It does, uh, June 1st. Uh, so we're already into hurricane season. Um, it started June 1st and it goes through the end of um, November, actually. So all the way through November, um, the average first named tropical system in the Atlantic is June 20th. That's typically when we see our first named storm. And so if we see it, you know, it, we're technically ahead of schedule. Now, over the last couple of years, um, we have seen development pretty early before that June 1st. We've even seen some development in May. And so some people are saying that, oh, are we late? You know, are we kind of behind schedule? Well, no, not really. Um, the last few years, we've just had some early development. This year, we really haven't seen that. Um, but technically, we're, it, it's not unusual to see not much activity before um, the end of June.